Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Miggy, and in today's video, we're going to be continuing the top down shooter series. We're going to get our character, enemies, and end gate to spawn in our level randomly. So, with that, let's roll the introduction and get right into it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is clean up a room. We made our, a pretty big mess when we were fooling around with getting the enemies working. So let's delete all the enemies we can here. We'll delete all the skeletons and bats. And I'm just going to delete all the slimes itself. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up our layers. So you can see that we have some instances here. I'm going to delete our character and rename the instances to just cursor. And then I'm going to make a new layer for our character, a new layer for our enemies, and then zone and gate. Now, speaking of zones, they're going to allow us to visually see where our character or enemies or even the end gate can spawn in our room very quickly. If I open up my objects, you can see that we already have two zones in here. I'm not sure what I was thinking when I first did it, so I'm going to delete one, and then I'm going to rename whatever the leftover one is just to object zones. If we open up object zones, you can see that it just has a draw event, and that's just to ensure that nothing is actually drawn in case we leave it in our room. Now we need to work on a spawner that's going to spawn our character, the enemies, and the end gate into our room. But first, let's actually drag the zones out into the zone layer. So you can see I'm just going to place a zone in here, and I'm going to drag it out. So this means that our characters or even the enemies can spawn within this little green section. I can duplicate it, and I'm just going to have one in each of the corners. So now anytime I look at my room, I can automatically see where the items could possibly spawn in my game. Now let's work on that spawner that we are talking about. We'll come down and we'll create a new object, and let's call this Object Spawner. This particular spawner is only going to have one event, and it's going to be the Create Event. So I'll maximize this because we're going to be writing a lot of code in here. Now we need to know the number of zones that we have and between you and I, I know that I have four, but what happens if we're building another room and we copy one of the zones in here so we'd have certain things spawn in the middle. So we don't wanna hard code the values, so let's make it dynamic so it will work for future levels. In the object zoner, let's get how many zones we have. We'll store this in an instance called zone count, and we want the instance number, which is a game maker function, and all we do is pass in what object we want it to count. So this will count the number of instances that exist within this level here. Now that we know the number of instances, let's make sure we take away one because we're going to be using the random function. And even though the number of instances will come back as four, we need to have it come back as as three because we will be using the numbers zero to three as our number will start at zero instead of one. So now we need to grab a specific zone and a random zone. So we will use the zone instance variable and we will use the function called instance find. We're going to pass in what object we are looking for and then we will use a I random range between zero and the zone count. So this is why we took away one when we used instance number, because we need zero and three instead of zero and four. If we had four in there, we would run into some issues. Now with this zone itself, let's pretend we picked this left zone. We need to have the ability to pick a random location within this green stuff here. So to do that, all we need to do is use the B-Box left, right, top, and bottom. For instance, we can make a new variable called uh, XX, and we can use a random range between the zone instance B-Box left, the zone in the index B-Box right. So this will give us a random X position between the left and the right, and let's just copy this and do the top and bottom as well, and we'll use the Y position. Now with these two variables, we're able to determine a random location within the green area. The next thing, we just have to spawn in our character. So we will use our character as another instance. So we'll use a character underscore instance, and that will just be using the instance create a layer. We're going to spawn it in at the random X and random y, loca y location. Then we will use the character layer and the object that we want to spawn is going to be object character. Now, one thing I will say that if we try to run this game, even though our character will spawn, we're going to have to fix up the camera a little bit. For instance, right now, this actual camera, the target is looking for something and it's looking for something that doesn't exist right now. We're looking for an object character. 
So let's open up the object bounds and fix this. We will use a create event and in here in the create event, let's create another variable and let's just call this follow instance and set it to no one. In the step event, instead of saying if we don't have a target, we'll say if we don't have a follow instance, then what we want to do is use the follow instance is going to be equal to the instance underscore find of whatever target we are looking for and we want the first item. So to break this down in the level, we are looking for a object character and the object character does not exist until we put it in the level. So this little bit of code is going to run every time until we find the actual target, which is object character. And therefore, follow instance will actually um, not equal no one. So it will come into this else statement. So make sure that follow instance equals no one. Then we try and get the follow instance based off of the target. Now we're going to have to go through and switch all these targets to say the follow instance. And that will fix our camera bounds code. Now in the object spawner, we have to update the actual bounds camera. So we could just say VAR bounds instance equals instance find. And we want to look for the object bound camera, or sorry, camera bounds. And we want the first one. So I can get away with this because I know there's only going to be one bound camera in my game. So the next thing I need to do is set the X and Y coordinates to whatever my character's X and Y coordinates are going to be. And then finally, I need to set the follow target, or sorry, follow instance to the character instance that we just created. Now, if I go to my level, let's actually try this out before we do anything else. So let's grab our spawner and we can throw it in the camera layer. Uh, it's fine, we'll delete it afterwards. So I hit F5, let's see if we have any errors here. So you can see that our character came in and if I move around, our camera is automatically going to spawn. It's gonna work, so we don't have any errors there. And you can see that we can move left and right and we did spawn on the right. So back in our spawner, let's actually make sure that we're always gonna be random by using a randomized function. And after we have all this character stuff, we're gonna be done with the zone. I don't want the character to spawn in this right zone and then have enemies also spawn in here. So the easiest thing for us to do is we can either do with this particular zone, we could say instance destroy. And if you didn't want to use the with function, you could just say instance destroy and then pass in the particular instance. So now that we've destroyed one of the zones, say if we were to delete this particular zone, now we only have these to work with and this is where we would spawn our enemies. So back in the object spawner, we're going to take a lot of this code. The next thing we need to do is we need to, once again, figure out how many zones we have, and then we are going to figure out how many enemies we are going to spawn. So we'll say enemy underscore count equals a global dot level. And we set this up a long time ago times two. So on our first level, we'll have two enemies on our second level. We'll have four, then six and eight, and then we'll keep going. So now we know how many times we need to loop. We can use the repeat function to loop that number of times. Then all we're really going to do is we're just going to go in here and we are going to copy. Let's actually copy all this code that we have. So the, these four lines, the instance, the X and Y coordinates, and then the character instance. And we're going to paste that in and I'm just going to tab it over. So we're going to keep this the same. We need to find a random zone based on the number of zones that we have. We're going to get a random location between X and Y. And then instead of saying the character instance, all we're going to say here is instance create layer at a random X, random Y position. And instead of saying character, we want our enemies layer. And we are going to use the function called choose. And we are going to supply it with the object enemy bat, object enemy skeleton, and then the object enemy slime. So now we are randomly going to create one of these enemies at a random X and Y location. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to have a gate. So I don't have a gate in here yet. So we're going to use another object and let's just call this object goal. And in this object goal, we're just going to assign the sprite. So if we go to sprite and we go to tile set, you can see that we have a sprite ladder here. So let's take that and go back to our spawner. Now our spawner only needs to happen once. So once again, we're gonna copy the code that we have up here. We'll copy those four lines, we'll come down and we'll clean this up a little bit. So 
Again, we'll find an insta uh, instance of a random zone. We'll get the location. And then all we need to say is instance create layer at that random spot. We want to create it on the gate and we want to create a object uh, goal. Okay, so the only other thing I want to do is I don't want any of these zones laying around. So I can just say instance destroy. And instead of passing a particular instance, I'm going to pass in the object name. So that will destroy any zones in the room. Then finally, I'll destroy my spawner just to keep everything nice and clean. Now, hopefully when we run the game, we'll have two enemies and we'll also have our gate. So let's run our game and you can see that we have our player, which we can shoot. We get our mana again. Let's see if we can find those enemies. So I spawned in the bottom. I'm going to be looking around. There is a bat. And let's see if there's one over here. Oh, there's the slime. And there is our end gate. And these guys work just like before. We can go ahead and we can kill them. You can see that they can shoot. I am horrible at killing that guy. Let's see if we can find the bat to have him shoot as well. He's up here. So you can see everything is working just as planned. And in the next series, we'll have to, or sorry, the next episode, we'll have to get it. So when we pass over this gate, we go to the next level. And we'll also be working on some lighting. But anyway, that is it. So hopefully you found this useful. I think zones are a great thing and definitely help me in the IDE when loading up just a single room so I can see where things are going to happen. So thanks for watching. A special shout out to the following users in no particular order. Ashby, Victor, Noah, Edward, Andrea, Ian, Darthwell, Robert, Vil, Casper, and Paul. Thank you all very much for showing support and watching the videos. Keep subscribing and liking and help get this channel out there. I'll see you in the next one.